Director, thank you so much for being here. Good to be here. More than 100 Americans die every day from gun violence. What can the ATF do to stop this epidemic of violence? The ATF, first of all, has to be working together with state and local law enforcement every day in every different place where that gun violence happens to find new and creative solutions to fight it, but also to use the tried and true models, the task forces that we work on with locals, uh, dealing with individuals that the law says and everybody agrees should not have firearms, uh, but are still out there killing people, catching them, and, and doing what police officers and federal agents and investigators do, which is put them in prison uh, to, to be held accountable for their crimes. Would you acknowledge you are taking over this agency at a time when crime and violence is worse than ever? I don't know about worse than ever, but things are, are not good right now. And, and look, you said it, uh, over 100 people every day in this country uh, are killed by, by firearms violence. And some of those things get on shows like this, but a lot don't. Uh, a, a lot of that is sort of the constant drumbeat uh, of gun violence that people uh, largely in our cities, but everywhere, uh, live with every day. It's unacceptable, and we in law enforcement are going to do everything we can to stop it. Guns have now become the leading cause of death for American children. Why isn't this a national emergency? Uh, well, it's certainly, you know, a national problem that is urgent. Uh, and I think everybody agrees about that. One of the things that makes this problem so hard is that it looks way different depending on where you are. So if, if you think of what the gun violence problem looks like in a large city, in, in New York City uh, or Chicago, and then you think, okay, what does it look like in the South? What does it look like in Alaska? What does it look like in, the, in, in uh, small towns? It looks different, and the reason uh, that we're having a, a hard time coming up with one solution is because there is no one solution. The ATF is smaller than most big city police departments. Is your agency outnumbered? I think all law enforcement are, are outnumbered, but we're not outsmarted. I think that's really important to understand. Technology is providing us with new and really exciting ways to try and catch shooters, uh, to try and identify shooters. Uh, so, so there's great technology and great ability for us to try and be more efficient in catching bad guys than there has been in the past. How can you use that technology to stop these mass shootings that are happening, and in many cases, happening at schools? Uh, so there's two problems out there. One of them is making sure uh, that we have the technology available, uh, that we have developed it. Uh, but the second issue is making it accessible in real time uh, when something happens. Okay, so, so this is about, catch, what I'm answering is really the question about catching people who do bad things. So if you have the technology, everybody knows that when a crime happens, that first time right after the, the crime occurs is the most important time in the investigation. And being able to have the partnerships already set up ahead of time, the access to the technology already set up ahead of time, and the people on call like happened in Highland Park, to be able to access leads and generate leads and follow up on leads immediately is really important. What laws would you like to see changed that could help the ATF stop the scourge of gun violence? There's a great national discussion about all the different laws out there, and Congress just acted in a bipartisan way to, to provide more laws. That, that is an important discussion. That is a discussion where people have different views. But the ATF director's job and ATF, our mission is to catch people who have violated the laws we already have. But you have an opinion. You've called for a ban on assault weapons in the past. In the past, I've talked about those issues, of course. And of course, like everybody, uh, I have an opinion. But again, it's really important that people understand that the, the ATF is not a political agency. There are a lot of supporters of the Second Amendment who believe that the ATF will become a long arm of those who want to take people's guns away. I can't control what other people believe. In my whole time, in my 20 plus years as a federal prosecutor, I've learned that you have to do the work. And that's really the ethic at, the, at ATF. ATF does the work, ATF delivers results, and we will continue to fight to do that. But I'm still not hearing from you what it is that the ATF can do to stop this epidemic of mass shootings. I think it'd be naive for me to sit here and say to you that uh, I would get confirmed as ATF director and this 
this constant drumbeat of gun violence is going to stop. To me, what we have to do is focus on addressing the problem. There have been times over the last 20 years, 30 years, when I've been in this business, where the crime rate has gone down. Right? So these are some strategies that work. Uh, so it's, it's, it's time to push the we got to get to work button, not the panic button. Will there be more Uvaldis? Uh, I, uh, it's it's, it's a, just a horrible question to, for you to even have to ask, right? But the truth of the matter is, is that there have been just incident after incident for a long period of time. And so we have to work hard to try to make sure there aren't, but I think the reality is there's going to be serious gun crime uh, that we have to work on at ATF, and we're, we're going to try to deliver results on that. Do you think it's too easy to buy a gun in this country? That's a, that's a conversation uh, for others. Look, we have a constitutional amendment uh, that the Supreme Court has said uh, protects the right to, to bear arms for individuals. And so it, it's for policymakers and courts to make those decisions, not for ATF and not for the ATF director to make those determinations. As a former prosecutor, right, what do you think of the Supreme Court's decision that would expand gun rights and essentially allow more people to carry firearms in public? Uh, the Supreme, what do I think about it as, a, as an attorney? Uh, and as a, whether I'm an attorney and I'm a former prosecutor or not, what I think about it is uh, when the Supreme Court says something, it is the law of the land. Supporters of that decision will point to what happened at that mall in Indianapolis where a, um, someone who was trying to carry out a mass shooting was stopped by someone who was carrying inside that mall. I mean, yeah. for me, uh, we've had uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of mass shooting incidents. Uh, it, it is true that in a small, I think you can count them on one, maybe two hands. Mm. Uh, something like that um, has occurred. Again, it's for others to determine what policies we have in this nation. Our job is to work within the policy framework established by uh, the president and Congress and the courts and to try to deliver safety as best we can for the American people. We're facing a, a really difficult problem. Mm -hmm. uh, we're facing uh, a mu multiple threats we haven't even talked about, uh, the threat of domestic extremism violence, which is ticking up and up in this country, which you saw uh, in Buffalo. Uh, so uh, I'm coming to this position with a sober view of the challenge ahead, but really hopeful that we can work together and try to get a handle on this and try to drive things down, try to drive the crime level in this country down further, try to make people uh, safer than they are now. ATF stands for Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms. How did one agency get tasked with those three things? Well, let's be clear, we're tasked with more than alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. Uh, ATF arson investigators are a national, international gem. Uh, they are among the best in, in the 1990s when African-American churches were getting burned down all over the United States and vulnerable communities and civil rights leaders were calling for help. The ATF delivered on the Church Arson Task Force along with the Department of Justice and partners. We have a lot on our plate, uh, but it's a challenge that ATF uh, has had for many years, and ATF will deliver on its mission. Steve Dettelbach, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Good to be here.